Welcome back one and all to Red Dead Redemption 2. I am the Dark Seraph. Last time we did... Honestly, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've edited. This is post. I got the numbers mixed up. I got a mess to clean up. But I found the episode of Part 91. So, I'm doing post-commentary. Let's find some good old... I want to go to the... What's his name? Friggin' veteran dude. Hello, baby girl. How are you? My Sophie's come to say hello. Hello. Are you my Sophie? My Sophie. My Sophie. Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? My girl. Okay, let's find some Babylon B stuff. Yeah. California update stop signs to read stop or don't whatever's cool you do you that ought to be good Sacramento California Governor Gavin Newsom is a swell guy who has done a lot to set California apart from the rest of the nation's backward ideas like poverty crime and freedom Newsom is turning his progressive utopian ray gun on traffic now. Signing an executive order Tuesday that replaces all California stop signs. What reads that read? The signs that read, stop or don't, whatever's cool. You do you. Now Californians can roll through stop signs momentarily touching their brake pedals to acknowledge that the sign exists without fear of being pulled over by police. Californians were already driving like this anyway. But now it's official. Newsom said in a press conference, besides, stop signs are oppressive symbols left over from a system of white, straight, male supremacy. These <laughs> better reflect our progressive, realistic views. Accidents increased pretty quickly after the change was made. State legislator is considering a bill that would compel drivers to slap a coexist sticker on the back of their car in order to magically magically prevent collisions. Oh lord. Oh, it's the old man. At which eternity? Help a blind man. Have this. I'll help the old timer out. Just as evil begat evil your whole life long, so good may beget good. Uh, sure. Okay, mister. <laughs> All the best now. Yeah. 
Parents allow six-year-old son to begin transitioning into a teenage mutant ninja turtle per his wishes. He's already a ninja turtle, you bigots. I am so sorry. Portland, Oregon. Begin like any other day for the Luro family. Greg and Cindy were getting ready for work. He had a CSR for a paperclip manufacturer. She has a street henna tattoo artist. When their boy Hayden came downstairs to eat his morning breakfast, Akashi's new redwood flavored cereal made with real bits of real redwood trees. As he munched on the twigs and leaves, he said the phrase that would change their lives together forever. I need to get better about that. Man, I wish I were Raphael. Greg abruptly stopped brushing his neck hair. Cindy almost dropped her kombucha. Oh, baby, his mom said, pulling up a chair next to him in the breakfast nook of their quaint Portland home. Do you really mean it? We can begin transition surgeries right away. I'll call them. Morezis. I hear they used an excellent surgeon when their son decided he wanted to be a Terminator, a Transformer. Yeah, I want to be a Ninja Turtle, he said. Pow! Bam! Bang! He then started kicking his mother and stabbing her in the face with his plastic side, confirming their suspicion that little Hayden was actually a Ninja Turtle trapped in a boy's body. Over the next three months, the boy underwent seven surgeries and a strange glowy sewer ooze to help him begin his biological transition into a ninja turtle who punches things. It's important for parents to listen to their kids, even desire or immediately affirm that desire. Greg told reporters at a press conference held on their lawn, if your kid says he's a fire truck, rip off his legs and install some industrial tires for goodness sake. Imagine how much harm you could do to your kids if you impressed your beliefs on them instead of listening to their subjective opinion of reality, he added. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Donald Trump wins... Donald Trump's White House wins an Emmy Award for the best reality show. Oh my god. Los Angeles, California. As experts predicted, the Donald Trump White House took home the prize for Outstanding Reality Competition Program at the Emmy Awards, handedly beating out the other shows like The Voice or Top Chef. Trump accepted the award in an emotional speech at the Microsoft Theater, thanking the hundreds of staff members he has fired so far in his presidency. As you well as his Lord and Savior, we Jesus Christ. I did. There's yeah. this you. Oh man, I know I'm forgetting so many people, he said down, as the background music began to prompt him to wrap up his acceptance speech. Let's talk a while. Spicy sure. the Mooch. So what do you do? Ben and the Cannon and uh, all the other guys I can't remember right now. You guys made all this possible. I know I'm the star here, but it's a great it's the great cast of side characters, past and present, that really made this whole insane circus come together. I'm the best, he cried out as he fi was finally escorted off stage. According to insiders, Academy voters found the day to day drama and over the top excitement of seeing who would be voted out of the White House each week electrifying and how so many more coffee. interesting than stale rehashes of talent show competitions and cooking shows. You just never know what's going to happen next. What One Academy member here? said on condition of right anonymity, it's almost like off. the writers are making oh, totally random geez, decisions every day. It really adds to the tension and excitement. The Trump White House also took home awards for best costume design and most likely to plunge the world into eternal nuclear winter. Sources confirmed. Majority of Americans say it is now okay to punch a grammar Nazi. 
wolf shouldn't come so close. Well then, let's take a look yeah, at this. Strange. It is, okay to punch, is it okay to punch a grammar Nazi? This question has been floating around the internet after footage of attacking well-known self-professed grammatical purist Shawton P. Middlesmith went viral on Friday. According to a new study, the answer among Americans is overwhelmingly, absolutely, Middlesmith, who identifies as an alt writer. Oh, Lord. And describes himself as a grammatarian was punched in the head by a person clad in black as he was being interviewed by journalists from Proof Reader Monthly. At the time of the attack, Middlesmith was explaining some of his controversial beliefs, such as far-right justified indentions, indentations, a, dis a distaste for Times New Roman Black, Oh Lord. Normative case biting, the annihilation of 99% of all Ephelis use, and transactive <laughs> verbophobia, anti semicolon, <laughs> and decided to the speaking of an Oxford, the spreading of an Oxford comma. Now, where she the get? video of the attack shows Mr. Middlesmith's glasses reeling to one side under the force of the blow and his attacker darting through the crowd after landing the punch. Mr. Middlesmith later re reported he She's was spat on, kicked there. in the pants, and uh, there's a whole lot of over there. Epithies were problem. epithies were hurled at it, him, such as There she is. Common ass. Got shy all of a sudden. Common ass. You got some extra miles in you tonight. I'm sure I'm missing the point on that. Neo sentenced capitalist. Come on. Semi colonialist. Astrophobic. Apostrophic and question Marxist. Video of the attack quickly inspired a flood of jokes and memes online. Some of which set the punt songs like World Crimes by Weird Al. There was a little substance debate about the ethics of punching a grammar Nazi. Opponents of the punch were hard to find. Supporters tended to say the punch was funny, and more than a few compared Middle Smith's attacks to famous Nazi punchers from pop culture like Indiana Jones and Captain America. All in all, one city found that 97% of the country supported punching annoying grammar Nazis. All Nazis should be punched in the face, and that includes grammar Nazis, even soup Nazis. And one person on Twitter said one person on Twitter. Excuse me. The tweet had over 4 million likes and retweets. For the record, Shawton Middlesmith says he is not a grammar Nazi. In an interview on Saturday, he said he is a member of the alt-right, as in writers, which he calls a movement toward grammatical purity. Favoring the upper class with a goal toward white supremacy. Middle Smith said he chooses not to use the term grammar Nazi because it doesn't resonate and because he says my views are more complex. Just try. The tax I am most concerned with is syntax. The authoritarian regime I support is Funk and Walgans. German National Socialism is historic movement of the past. It arose at a very particular time and had practical motives and ideas and political and, s and policies and styles that had little to do with grammar. Besides, Mein Kampf is full of grammatical errors. <laughs> Middlesmith says he is worried about being punched again. Since it doesn't feel safe leaving his CD duplex anymore, people on the internet say he should be scared. I don't think any kind of Nazi should be safe Walking the streets of America, said one tweet. I'm all for the proper use of punch you action. Atten. Atten. Okay. Get back. We've walked into something here. Whoa, you all right? I was ready.
swear to offer my complete and unconditional. Yeah, I don't think the wolves would have shown much mercy. That's quite an ambush she let us into. Yeah, bushwhacking, I'd call it. Huh? God damn! Over here! Over here! Ah! Damn you! I'm looking for another one. You all right? Yeah. Damn. Big son of a bitch. Is that all of them? That's the best of them. Look at them. Proud thing. Scary thing. <laughs> they brought us here to be slaughtered. You are after a hunt. Pope yeah. apologizes for Catholic Church's hunting. carbon You're emissions from burning heretics at the stake. It's still early. We'll stay up here while oh my God. we dress this animal. I won't likely see another like him for some time. Yeah, I hope I won't either. Thanks for Vatican City. Yeah, the Pope has apologized for the Catholic Church's past activities of burning so heretics me. at the stake centuries Wait. ago, admitting that the practice was a Thank carbon you. emission heavy activity that did not reflect good oh. stewardship of the earth. It's clear now that the Catholic Church made missteps centuries ago by not finding a carbon neutral way to dispose of heretics, he said in a special address. I am filled with regret when I think of a large carbon footprint left behind by the reformers and other heretics previous pope her, heretics previous popes tortured and incinerated the pope confirmed that going forward the catholic church will be punching purchasing carbon credits to offset the footprint of any heretics they decided to burn at the stake as well as any documents they decided to torch before investigators get too close oh it was kind of a short one Saudi Arabia closes down new Chick-fil-A location for a disappointing lack of homophobia. Okay, here we go. Riyadh. Chick-fil-A executives were delighted when Riyadh development authorities invited the restaurant to open a new location in the city. They love serving delicious chicken sandwiches and spreading Chick-fil-A cheer wherever they're invited, and even if they disagree with the worldview, religion, worldviews, religions, and lifestyles of certain areas, unknown to them, however, Saudi Arabia only asked Chick-fil-A to come because they thought they were supposed to be homophobic and anti-LGBT spreading hate and fear of gay people wherever they went. When we heard how homophobic Chick-fil-A was, we thought it was a perfect fit, said King Salam. Salman, excuse me. But they ran their restaurant for a solid three months here and never once did they stone a gay person or throw them off a roof or even use an anti-LGBT slur against them. In fact, they would never, in fact, they, all they would ever say was my pleasure, he said, clearly exasperated. It was infuriating. The last straw came when an anti-Chick-fil-A protesters arrived in the city to protest Chick-fil-A. Gay people were even seen kissing each other and chanting gay slogans outside the restaurant. But Chick-fil-A didn't shoot them, imprison them, or torture them. They simply went out front and offered them free chicken sandwiches. Chick-fil-A does not adequately reflect the anti-LGBT values we hold dear in Saudi Arabia, Salman said. They are canceled. <laughs> oh, I love the Babylon Bee. I've never eaten at a Chick-fil-A. I've never eaten there. Not once. People say it's good, but I've just never eaten there. There's not one in my town, and whenever I go to the city, I usually eat Thai food. So, yeah, I don't eat Chick-fil-A. I have no opinion of them. 
Liberals clarified their racism is actually democratic racism. Yep. Let's skip that one. There's gotta be another good one in here. I'll find one, I promise. That's a good way to do post commentary when I screw up the audio. Just shit post from the Babylon Bee. Yeah. Oh jeez, I didn't turn my air conditioner off. Need to go fix that. And boop is off. Hello, Angel Girl. Still at my feet, I see. I love you. You're such a pretty girl. Anyone gonna castrize me for love for saying I love my dog? You assholes. I don't I really doubt that's even gonna happen. Unless you're an asshole. Elizabeth Warren admits to wearing pale face at a college costume party. Here we go! Senator Elizabeth Warren is embroiled in a controversy once again. This time after she admitted to wearing racially offensive pale face at a costume party back in her college days. And he's a proud Native American woman. I now realize that dressing as a white woman at that party all those years ago was insensitive and offensive said in a heartfelt apology video, it was wrong of me to culturally appropriate white culture as I'm only 1,023rd and 1,024th white European colonizer. I only hope that my constitu constituents can forgive me for who I was back in my college days, she added. Warren was also photographed with a friend dressed as a KKK member, but she refused to distance herself from that photograph calling the KKK an important part of history of abortion rights in America, for which I have fought my whole career. Yeah, the woman who founded Planned Parenthood was a clan baker. Let that sink in for a minute. Here we go. Canadian announces his preferred pronoun is A. Ottawa, the capital of all of Canada. Native Canadian Le Liam Trimbali recently announced that his preferred pronoun is A. The announcement came in the form of his updated Twitter profile that read, I'm Liam. I like hiking and my dog Flossie. I also like syrup. Eh? Eh. Trimbalay says he has had no trouble getting others to use his preferred pronoun. Everybody is pretty nifty about yeah. using my pronoun there, he told reporters. Even that Jordan Peterson guy was real nice about it. He's supposed to be the guy who doesn't use people's preferred pronouns or whatever they liked, but whatever, not for me. I didn't even have to tell him. Liam says the only time he had trouble getting people to respect his preferred pronoun is when he took a short trip to the United States. People kept calling me he, and I was like, eh, and then they kept just saying he, and I just kept saying he. Well, all they do is laugh at me. Trimbley reported in a big blog post for, from the New York. Absolute bigotry down in the States, eh? Trimbley cut his trip short and returned home. I prefer to live where my pronoun is respected. And there are just a gaps in hockey. <laughs> Canadian jokes! Self-checkout machines now programmed to make awkward small talk about your purchases. 
<laughs> Seriously, if you haven't got the chance, go follow the battle on me. It's friggin' hilarious. I have enough time for one more shit post read. Self checkout machines now programmed to make awkward small talk about your purchases. Many Americans have got behind the idea of self checkout machines since they often know, seem girl, to be faster be than sick. waiting in a long line for a human cashier. But people were complaining about the machines did not behave like enough like real people. So programmers have upgraded them with the capability of making weird, inappropriate comments about everything you buy. That's a lot of cheese you're buying. Do you like cheese? One machine said as a guy bought a few blocks of cheddar cheese. Yep. Cheese gives me terrible constipation, the machine continued, ignoring all the obvious social cues that it probably shouldn't be talking about the stuff the guy was purchasing as it was programmed to do. Last time I had cheese, I was backed up for weeks. And now the machine went on and on about the special dry skin cream a woman was purchasing. After her, she was she has dry skin telling her about this weird growth on his neck. <laughs> yep. The machines are programmed to single out private, potentially embarrassing purchases like toiletries, hygiene products, and medicine, and specifically talk about those. They will do so very loudly as they continue to tell everyone in line to hear. Finally, the machines will begin yelling at you if you make a single mistake while checking out. Shouting, hey, there's an unexpected item in the bagging area. What are you, a moron? Before emitting a loud siren so everyone in the store knows you don't know how to work the machine. <laughs> and that's all I've got time for in this branch of the Babylon Bee. So this is where I noticed I fucked up the audio. I was kind of upset about it. So I'm going to be slightly irritated in the coming commentary. Thank you all for listening to this annoying, annoying voice. Boy, let me tell you something, guys. There is nothing better than recording for almost 30 minutes and being on the wrong channel. God damn it. Well, that just, that was a, certainly a thing. That just, that just really pisses me off. You are now hot. There we go. There we go, lose the jacket. Long story short, I got some game and I'm riding into roads to get it sold. I'm very irritated. Very, very irritated. You can do it, girl. We're almost to the butcher. He's probably closed, but I can wait until morning and sell this stuff. Yeah, I still gotta take down wanted posters. I think I got like two or one or two more.
but you're here. Fine, I'll wait till morning. I guess you're closing up for the night. Oh, and I lost my wolf. God damn. Perfect rabbit carcass. Really enjoy that. Okay. I'm gonna end this one here. Thank you all for watching. Join me next time on Red Dead Redemption 2 as I go see what Sadie wants. Because that's all I have left to do. But until then, I am the Dark Seraph, signing off. And I swear I won't fuck up the channels again. Even though I probably will, knowing me.